Welcome back. So why are our airlines fading or appearing to be fading? The aviation industry in the country have, appears to be going through a distress. There are now unpalpable fears that a downturn in the nation's economy may force more airlines out of business. Would that be the case? While the travelers are lamenting about how low capacity and limited choices, Amcan announced the takeover of Nigeria's biggest carrier, Arik Air. Domestic carriers are threatened by the low value of the Naira. According to airline operators, airlines meet so many costs, costly foreign exchange components on a daily basis that accounts for 70 to 80 percent of direct operational cost. Mm. So 70 to 80 percent of their income goes into. And is in foreign exchange. And in foreign exchange. Okay, but let we're not. It's not us. Mm -hmm. They are here. Mm -hmm. They will tell us more, and so to help us understand what's happening there, we have in the studio. I'll start with the lady, Tony Olajide, Chief Operating Officer of Air Peace. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. And uh, Captain Roland Ia is the Managing Director of Top Brass Aviation. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. And Ahmadu Litrus, President, Air Transport Senior Staff Services Association of Nigeria. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Well, we reached out to the NCAA, and their DG was supposed to be with us, but owing to certain circumstances, he had to pull out at the last minute. Um, so let's get back here and talk. Let me begin with you, Mr. Yai. What's your take? Why are airlines failing? Direct question. Um... To start with, the operating environment is extremely hostile. Um, besides that, uh, we have a, a, a number of issues which ordinarily um, would have been taken for granted in other climes, which in our case uh, hasn't been the case. Um, I think to a large extent, however you want to look at it, the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority is complicit in the, in the entire um, uh, scenario we find ourselves. Um, I say this because there are two fold remits to the Civil Aviation Authority. Um, one is for the safety oversight of industry, and the second remit, which to a large extent has been totally neglected, is the development of industry. Um, in terms of development of industry, the Civil Aviation Authority is required to formulate policies that would help and ensure the growth of industry. And this is meant to be done in tandem with the economy of a country. Um, it's supposed to look at all the issues uh, surrounding the economy of the country and look at what they need to do to encourage the growth of the airline industry. Unfortunately, the airline industry is just at the apex of the entire you know, sector. Now, if anything goes wrong, the airlines you know, they get hit first. Yes. So to a large extent, that particular uh, negligence on the part of a civil aviation authority when it comes to the development of the industry by way of formulating the right policies uh, has been a major major setback for the industry and the truth of the matter is and I say this it is it is it's inconceivable that you can expect to uh, to get something where it does not exist um, I've said this before, I'll say it again. It is important to have at the helm of affairs in every facet of the Nigerian economy people with the right competences who can get the job done well. Unfortunately, uh, we, 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 we've been inundated with the era of political patronage to a large, a large extent. So we have never had, in most cases, people with the right competences, holding the right positions to understand the ramifications of their actions or inactions, however you look at it. So that too, for me, I mean, that's the background to where we are today. Um, what has happened to the airlines taken over by Amcon are things that we could have seen a long time ago. And I'm sure we did. But unfortunately, where the regulator, by way of omission or commission, has not done what they're supposed to have done, then of course we can't get any better than we are today. And that's unfortunately the, 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 the crux of the matter. Okay, yeah. Toyin, he's talked okay. about operating environment. He's just pushed it all in there, the mm. operating environment. What's your take? I mean, it is absolutely correct. 
the operating environment in Nigeria for aviation is extremely hostile. And when I say extremely hostile, when the airlines cannot, I mean they are struggling to survive in an environment that ordinarily should be seamless, then how do you expect the industry to, to, to progress? We have, um, if we start even with the infrastructure, that is a huge, huge concern for the operators. In other um, parts of the world, you have an um, airline operating minimum 22 hours a day, or sometimes they even have the opportunity to run 24 hours. In Nigeria, once you start 7 a.m., by 6, for some airports, you can go in there. Maybe maximum is 7, 7 p.m. A typical example was what we experienced yesterday to fly into one of the airports. We had um, some issues in the morning about weather delay. You have a program already set up for an aircraft, and then you have a delay in the morning. Deal weather. This is weather that if you have good infrastructures at the airport for landing aids, which would have assisted the um, airport to be able to accommodate this aircraft, even you know, with some limits of weather. And if they're not there, the airline is the one that would suffer. So you have a situation whereby, because of this, your flight is running delayed because you couldn't start on time. By the time you have to go into the airport and you're in Lagos at 5 o'clock, if you don't leave at 5 o'clock, you can get into some of the airports in this country. And then you have almost maybe a full load of 130 passengers that you need to take out of Lagos. And then the airport is telling you, sorry, um, it's sunrise, sunset. Um, once it's 6.30, you can come in. Because the landing aids are not there. They tell you the approach light is not there in Nigeria, where we are today. I mean, it's, it's unacceptable. It, it's unacceptable. And then the airline would have to suffer. Because what do you have to contend with? Angry passengers, disgruntled passengers, they don't want to understand. They and don't. In, the, in the face of all of this, do you still pay the taxes, the landing charges? The I mean, you... <laughs> Even though it's not your fault that you didn't take off when you're no, supposed to. No, if you don't go in there, you don't pay the landing, right? But, of course, those, those charges are there because every time you fly, you have to pay. So, But where you landed, mm -hmm. there's a time limit you're supposed to be on ground, right? Exactly. So if you're delayed because the other airport has no equipment to receive you, you still pay those charges? No, because where we're supposed to leave from is our base. So you're there, so you don't have to pay for that particular flight because okay. you hadn't taken off. But if you had taken off, then you'll have to pay, you know, all these additional charges. Okay, um, Amado, you are of the um, Associ Air Transport Senior Staff Services. Um, I don't know how long you have been in the business, but what have you seen over the years when you look at airlines and the kind of uh, things that they put in place to ensure that they survive? Yes, we've talked about operating environment, we've talk, talked about um, issues surrounding how much is being expended, but let's look at what they have been offering, talking about the airlines. Is this something that could have sustained them in the long run? Well, um, thank you so much. I, before I get to your question, uh, let me speak to the first issue that was raised. Um, the state of the industry, if you look at aviation in Nigeria, we've evolved uh, between the period 99 till date. Um, there's been a lot of rejuvenation, legal framework uh, to make for an efficient, safe aircraft operations in Nigeria. Uh, to say that uh, the fault is squarely that of the CA might not be correct because I think uh, the primary responsibility for a safe, secure, efficient, economic operation of aircraft is that of the AOC holder. It is your system. You have the, it's your product. Now, what the CAA does is to put in place the infrastructure, legal and otherwise, to enable that operation. 